It's the Christmas season, and what a day in Southern California. This is the Pacific Ocean at its best. 80 degrees, 15% humidity, but we're not going anywhere today. And that's because of this. <laughs> the sole, the floor, is out. And I'm in the 27th day now of building a, a new one out of teak and holly plywood. So, no selling for the month of December, but we can still venture off in our imagination. Which brings me to my books. I wanted to introduce people to sailing from scratch. Hi, I'm Christian Williams and welcome aboard. For the next few hours, we'll be talking about sailing and sailboats in what I hope is more like a conversation than a textbook. We'll discuss boats, small and large, which might be right, how to choose and how to buy one, and how the simple decision to learn to sail can change everything and open up the door to a new world. Personally, I'm not a big fan of advertising. I like to think of myself as immune. So let's call this information. I have two books on long distance solo sailing. The first has the entertainment value of being the first voyage I ever made alone with all of the trepidation. When I look back at this book, I think, wow, you, uh, you really were pretty scared about the prospect of not having somebody to talk to at a cocktail party and not getting all the feedback that we get every day, the pats on the back saying, you're okay, lad, you're doing real well. What would happen if you were out there all alone with the elements and nobody to say, good job, or watch out? And that book is called Alone Together. I don't even know how I got myself into this project in the first place. It's taking forever. This boat is particularly complicated in the way they put in the floorboards. And, uh, well, one perseveres, I guess. My book called Philosophy of Sailing is 2,500 miles across the North Pacific, thinking about what it all might mean. You know, there's something out there that I still can't recapture after three voyages. The idea of it is elusive, and yet when you're there, when you turn your head, there's some awareness of the universe that we certainly don't have while driving a car down a crowded freeway. We're sitting here in a slip on a beautiful December day. Philosophy of sailing, not too heavy on philosophy, but very heavy on being alone and sort of making a go of it. Bobby Ayers is alone, always has been alone. He's the protagonist of my novel Rarotonga. Rarotonga, the dream and the wreckage. Wreckage left behind in the fractured lives of those around him. Lives changed by Bobby Ayers, who has disappeared again. He left port in his 60-foot luxury sailing yacht three months before and in his wake confusion and disarray, tracked by the Internal Revenue Service, trailed by his reputation and the memories of those he knew and loved, loved in his own way. His yacht gathers its power from wind and sun. It has air conditioning, power winches, a freezer of elk and maguro, food enough for years on a yacht that need never seek shore, a yacht that has disappeared from every chart cloaked in stealth, plying the hidden Pacific somewhere. Where are the answers? Rarotonga. Oh, come on, three weeks of work and we're just to the varnishing stage? And when I get them all finished, will they fit? Oh, I'd rather be reading. It proves we're never alone. In our lives, we're lucky to know a dozen people, but books give us a thousand more. We live through them across the centuries and the oceans. And if we don't like where the author's taking us, I like to throw the book across the room. Can't do that with people. 
Not supposed to, anyway. There are lots of good sailing books, and I'll put a video link to my favorites in the YouTube description. Thanks for watching this brief account. The next time you see me, I hope it will be carrying beautiful varnished boards down to the yacht to install them. But in the meantime, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, buy some books.